part was driving to the grocery store um, early in the morning and a high school senior on his way to school pulled out from a stop sign and the front of his car contacted the rear of Bart's minivan and when the minivan got sideways in the road it rolled over and he was ejected. I felt so guilty that day for having sent him on an errand for me. Our daughter was eight months old at the time and spent much time with Bart, but that particular day I insisted he leave her at home. So for the next several years, I really had a hard time dealing with every bit of what had happened. When a person is involved in a rollover wreck and they stay within the occupant compartment, that is, they stay belted and the occupant compartment doesn't cave in on them, 85% of the people walk away with no injury. From day one, Yvonne was saying, Bart never went anywhere without a seat belt on. I knew from the get-go that Bart was wearing a seat belt and I wanted everyone else to know that. So that's really what drove me. I am just very fortunate that I had an attorney who was top-notch and a staff who was, uh, his staff is exceptional because they actually went above and beyond to prove that. The first step that we took was to call Thomas Horton in from, from Detroit, a seatbelt expert, and asked him to tell us if he could find any forensic evidence on the seatbelt. And he came back to me and said, oh, there's forensic evidence, all right. No question, this guy was wearing his seatbelt, and I can tell you why it came unlatched. We were able to move forward and change history. Chrysler was forced to change the design of the seat belt buckle and because of that um, it's no longer in vehicles and certainly there are people that uh, are alive because of it today. And I have been blessed with Yvonne's case that we were able to make an impact in society that we can point to. I credit you for keeping me sane. Uh, he's a wonderful person, he's a good friend and he's an exceptional attorney. <laughs> and I mean that sincerely.